Hi guys, welcome to Music Theory Grade 1, Part 5, Intervals. Okay, so for intervals, you will ex be expected to write and recognize intervals of a third and a fifth above the tonic. Now remember, we learned tonics in the last lesson, and a tonic is the first note of the, of the scale, or really it would be the, the note of the key signature. So for example, C major, C would be your tonic, or F major, F would be your tonic. Okay, so first we're going to need to establish what key we're in so that we can know what the tonic is. When we do know the key, we simply count to the third note to figure out a third. So, for example, in C major, the third note would be E. We'd count C, D, E. Or in G major, the third would be B, G, A, B. And to find out what the fifth would be, we'd count to the fifth note. So, in F major, the fifth would be C, F, G, A, B, C. And in D major, the fifth would be A, D, E, F, G, A. Okay. Now, an easy way to do this is if the tonic is on a line, the third will just be the, the note on the line above it. And the fifth would just be the note two lines above it. And if it's in a space, the third will be the note on the space above, and the fifth would be the note two spaces above. If we are asked to recognize an interval, just count up from the bottom note and you'll be able to see if it's a third or a fifth. If asked to write an interval with a key signature, first write the key signature and then write the tonic note and then just add whichever interval you've been asked to write, if it's the third or the fifth. If asked to write an interval without a key signature, write the tonic and then the interval and then remember to make sure that you put any accidentals that are necessary. So, for example, if you've been asked to write um, a, th a third above D in a D major without a key signature, remember that D major has an F sharp and a C sharp, and the third of D, D, E, F, would be F. So make sure that you put a sharp above or before that F so that you have D to F sharp, or else it will be incorrect. Okay, there's an example of a third. You can see how the, the tonic is in the space and therefore the third would be in the space above. Okay, so let's just pretend that this is in the treble clef because we accidentally cut out the clef here. You can see that this is an interval of a third in F major without a key signature. So it's an F and an A. Okay, here we've got our treble clef so we can see that this is a C and a G. So this is an interval of a fifth in C major. Triads. Triads are really chords. They, they're made up of three notes. A triad is made up of a root note, which really just is a fancy way of saying the bottom note of the chord. And then it's got intervals of a third and a fifth above it. If the root note is on a line, the third and fifth will be on the two lines above it. If it is in a space, the third and fifth will be on the two spaces above it. Okay, so we can see that here. We've got your root note, which is a C, on the line. And then we've got our next two notes of the chord on the E and the G on the lines above it. And here, our root note is a D, and we've got our F and an A on the, in the spaces above it. Okay, so... This is in C major, and this we've actually made up triads on each tone degree of C major. So really on each note of the scale, we've put a triad. And remember, we learned about tonics and subdominants and dominants. So here we've got our tonic triad, which would be on the tonic. Then on the subdominant, remember that means the fourth note of the scale, we have our subdominant triad. And then on the dominant, remember that means the fifth note of the scale, we've got our dominant triad. And these are known as 
primary triad. Okay, I'll go over that one more time. In grade one, you need to learn three triads. The tonic triad. Remember, tonic would be the first note of the scale. The subdominant triad. Remember, subdominant would be the fourth note of the scale. And the dominant triad, which would be the fifth note of the scale. So these three, tonic, subdominant, and dominant triads, are known as primary triads. In grade one, you might be asked to either write the triad or identify the triad. So when identifying triads, we use what we call figuring to give them meaning. This figuring is in the form of Roman numerals, which are really just letters that we use to represent numbers. In major keys, the tonic is figured with a capital I, which would be the Roman numeral for one. The subdominant would be figured with a capital I next to a capital V, which is actually the Roman numerals for four. And the dominant would be figured with a capital V, which is the Roman numeral for five. In minor keys, such as A minor, the tonic is figured with a lowercase i. It is a minor sounding triad and so it gets a baby i instead of a capital. The subdominant, which is also actually going to sound minor, is figured lowercase or baby i and lowercase v. And the dominant, which would be a major sounding chord, is figured with the capital V. You can see that here. This is in a major key, so it's figured with a capital I, a capital I and a V, and a capital V. Okay, remember, triads are three note chords built with a root, which just means the bottom note, and intervals of a third and a fifth above it. You may be asked to write one of the primary triads, which remember, were 1, 4, and 5, with or without a key signature. Remember to look at the key signatures first, if there is one, to identify what your tonic, subdominant, or dominant chords will be. If there is no key signature, remember to add in any accidentals that should be added. If you are asked to write a tonic triad, the tonic, remember that means the first note of the scale, of the key will be your root note. A subdominant triad will have the subdominant note, remember that's the fourth note of the key as its root note, and a dominant triad will have the dominant, which is the fifth note of the key, as its root note. Remember a root note just means the bottom note of the triad. The primary triads are the tonic triad, which remember, in a major key is figured with a capital I, and in the minor key is figured with a lowercase i. The subdominant triad, remember, in the major key it's figured with a capital I and a V, and in the minor key it's figured with a lowercase i and a V. And finally, the dominant triad, which is always figured with a capital V, because even in a minor key it still sounds like a major triad.